Welcome to our Five on Five. We're pleased to be joined by Rick Jones, the director of Choices Counseling Center. Rick, thanks for coming in, man. Good to see you. Good evening. So Good tell evening. us, uh, in case anyone's just tuning in, uh, what do you do here? What do you do in Josephine County as a substance well, I'm the director counselor. of Choices Counseling Center. We're an outpatient drug and alcohol treatment program that services youth, families, and adults who have substance abuse problems. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so what is that... Uh, what choices, what, how, what kind of people you work with in Josephine County? Well, anybody that will come our way, we're the uh, provider for the Josephine County Drug Court. Mm. We see people who are referred because they've been arrested for a DUII or a child welfare case. Um, we have uh, a fair amount of youth that come our way as a result of family intervention. Our families bring them in the door and say we'd, we'd like to get some help. So we'll serve anybody that comes to us. Um, we do have a tendency to see a lot of folks that are mandated because those are the folks that seek treatment first. Mm -hmm. Now what kind of uh, substance abuse issues are we seeing in Josephine County right now? Well, um, we, you know, I did a little research before I left the office today and uh, about 40% um, of our caseload is still using methamphetamine and about just under that um, is, are using opiates and then alcohol and marijuana are running uh, third and fourth there uh, as staples in our community. Mm -hmm. Are we seeing uh, ebbs and flows? I mean, it, we've certainly been talking about meth for a long time, but heroin does seem to be more on the rise. Absolutely. Um, it seems that methamphetamine has been kind of a staple. We had the big surge back in the 2000s, and, and we were successful in being able to get pseudoephedrine mm -hmm. behind the counter or prescriptions, um, which really slowed down the, the local mom-and-pop labs, but the meth is still coming from... Um, Mexico or wherever it comes from and uh, along with that is the heroin and we're seeing a, uh, a new population of folks that are using heroin, uh, a younger college age uh, uh, group of folks that are using opiates and, and uh, finding out that they're a little bit different than the uh, stimulants. Mm -hmm. Now with, with those opiates, uh, pain pills oftentimes uh, can lead people down that path. What yes. do you tell people who, who deal with painkillers? Uh, you know, they're prescribed by a doctor, right. they have some pain, but things can get out of hand. Well, um, the hard part is is that what kills pain is the opiate, um, and they are very addicting. Um, you can use those painkillers for a very short period of time and develop a, a physical dependence on those. And if you begin to uh, start seeking the mood swing and where you're actually trying to get more from your doctor or you start going to see another doctor or you start talking to friends about, hey, how can I get some more, you're actually venturing out into that world where pretty soon you're going to actually find heroin. And that's hmm. actually a true story uh, for a lot of our clients who said, you know, I started taking prescription uh, medications and um, Pretty soon I found out that heroin uh, was cheaper and available and not as much of a hassle as far as going to the doctor. Hmm. Scary stuff. All right, well, we're going to take a quick break. Absolutely. Much more with Rick in a moment. Stay with us. Welcome back to our Five on Five. Again, we're here with Rick Jones from the Choices Counseling Center. Rick, uh, a sobering unit. That's something you guys are trying to get going in Josephine County. What exactly is that? Well, it's a facility that's kind of in between the hospital and the county jail. You know, when people are in trouble with their alcohol, they oftentimes uh, are just a nuisance. They haven't really committed a crime. They don't belong in jail. They're not really, really sick, so they don't belong in the hospital. So we're really trying to develop a, a facility that would actually keep those folks safe. They could be used by emergency personnel, law enforcement, to uh, just basically sober people up. So, but it is, you know, it's a locked unit. It's a, um, um, a short period of time just to get people uh, mm. sober and then uh, involved in other resources that might help them with their lives. Okay, so what's standing in our way from getting one of those in Josephine County? Well, right now there's a process going on that's pretty exciting. I think uh, it's certainly going to happen, but we're, we're researching funding resources. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not a medical facility, so the funding there is a little precarious. It's not necessarily a law enforcement facility. Um, so the funding, but the city has committed to help us, the local alcohol and drug planning committee has committed to help us, and we have the gospel rescue mission, local law enforcement, and uh, some local community folks that are just very excited about helping this process, and so we formed a board and we're moving forward to uh, investigate funding and, and different ways to put this facility together. Well, it's very exciting. Now, if anybody has any questions about the uh, sobering unit or choices in general, uh, you guys, can they, can they contact you guys? Absolutely. Please call me at 541-479-8847. Very good. Rick, great to meet you. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Stay with us. We'll be right back.